Good evening and welcome to the Superintendent's Contract Subcommittee meeting. Today is Tuesday, March 22nd, 2022, and the time is 6.13 p.m. Uh, let me just establish a quorum. So, Mrs. Sullivan? Mr. Homer? Here. Mrs. Ehlers? Here. Mrs. Mendez? Here. Mr. Rodriguez? Here. Mr. Sullivan? Here. Uh, Mayor? Yes, here. And I'm present, Joyce Asak. So we do have a quorum. So the first item on the agenda is the midpoint evaluation discussion, and Superintendent Thomas is going to present. Carry the microphone. <laughs> Do you need glasses? I am. All right, so um, thank you. I, I wanted to um, go over my mid cycle review. Uh, this will be obviously the goals. Um, my goals were approved by uh, the school committee uh, back in the fall. Uh, so uh, this is the mid-cycle review and update uh, where we stand with um, with the goals I put forward to uh, the school committee back in the fall. So um, just a quick reminder about evaluating the superintendent. And I know um, the mayor and vice chair, uh, Azak, are working with Karen Spalding, our new uh, et eval, um, specialist, and she'll be working with the school committee as we move into the actual evaluation process, probably in May. Um, so I know they'll be, she'll be contacting, going through the mayor and, and uh, Ms. Azak for a, a training with the school committee soon. So uh, Karen will be working with you on that. Um, so stu the superintendent is evaluated on progress towards the achievement of goals, student learning goal, professional practice goal, and then between two and four district improvement go goals. Um, performance on each st each of the standards in DESE's superintendent district administrative rubric. So we have to follow what DESE lays out um, for the superintendent evaluation. Um, this year it's important for us. I know last year because of COVID, um, we didn't end up getting the evaluation done in time um, by July 1st. So um, DESE did send us a letter that uh, we were in violation uh, because my ratings have to be sent to the Department of Education along with every other uh, educator in the system. Uh, we have to send DESE the ratings for everyone. Um, so we just have to make sure we can't miss that again this year. Again, COVID held everything up last year. So um, they were fine. They sent the letter. They understood it was through COVID. But this year, they're going to expect um, everything to be done and put in on time. Uh, so once you do your ratings, then uh, Ethan and Boo will take those ratings and send those in with all other educators when we have to submit all the edu uh, the ratings for all educators in uh, to the state. So um, this is the, a copy of the rubric that was updated in 2019, uh, um, and it's in your packet, so uh, you can go over this and just what actually the superintendent is uh, judged on is standard one, instructional leadership. Standard two is management and operations. Standard three is family and community engagement. And standard four is the professional culture. Um, the evaluation process is self-assessment, um, which I do, obviously, and look over what the district needs are. Then I propose my goals, which was done last fall. And then school committee approves them, which was done last fall. And here we are now to the mid-cycle review. Um, again, we just did this. Um, a self-assessment and goal proposal. So I assess my practice with my leadership team, um, and we, we're guided by performance standards as provided in the rubric, data on student learning, where we are uh, with student achievement, uh, the, our past progress on district goals, um, and then all of other relevant information, obviously the district review that we have. Um, my first year as superintendent is when we ran into COVID. So um, the school committee at the time allowed me, us to shift my goals because it shifted from obviously a normal regular school year into how do we now switch to a remote learning <laughs> when no one knew how to do before. So 
the goals were adjusted for that. The superintendent then I drafts four to six SMART goals uh, through the self-assessment process. Um, so I d need to identify key actions, timelines, benchmarks uh, related to both the progress and outcomes that will be used to assess progress in each of these goals and achieving them. Um, the school committee and superintendents often establish multi-year goals, although this is an annual, this one is an annual plan. If a multi-year goal has been measured at annual benchmarks, it can be included in the plan. So now that we soon will be voting on the new strategic plan, we can start to look for those multi-year goals to be in place. Um, and this is the goal proposal, um, again, that was done uh, last, last fall. Um, and then the adoption of the goals by the school committee, which was done. So my student learning goal, ensure students have access to high quality instruction in an environment that prepares them for college and career and reflects their perspectives on curricula, extracurricular opportunities, facilities, and other issues that impact their learning. So just a quick update on this. Um, that's related to this, we have, um, we brought forward this year the three focus areas of effective instruction, active reading and writing, and positive relationships. Uh, we've been focused on that. It's mentioned all the time. It's in our teachers' lesson plans. It's talked about with, um, at all our staff meetings, and it's really brought a focus to the district. It also not only teaches, it supports staff, it's our adjustment counselors, our guidance counselors that have all focused in these, in these three important areas. Uh, we also brought a lesson plan template, a common lesson plan template, what we did not have before. So every teacher is using that same lesson plan template that um, gives a clear agenda for their lesson, objectives, and make sure a clear objective for each lesson. And we also make sure that uh, there's routines in place, there's an agenda for the lesson, um, feedback, a closing, an opening to the lesson and a closing. So the lesson plan template has been very helpful. And then we have a, now a district walkthrough tool. So myself and other district leaders will visit schools and do a walkthrough of classrooms uh, with the principal and other members of the team at the school. And then we debrief, we're in classrooms for about between seven, about six to eight minutes in each classroom. We probably visit over 14 to 15 classrooms when we go through the, the walkthroughs. And you know, just to see, we look at school, student work, we look at the objectives, um, we see if their students are, their students are engaged. Um, we sit down, we talk to students, ask them you know, what they're learning for the day. Uh, they've been really good. Um, you could see when we first started them in the beginning of the year, because we hadn't done them in a while, um, it was kind of disruptive and you know, the students would look and the teachers would look, but, and, and again, because it hadn't been done, but now that we've been doing them and I think we're on the, starting the fourth cycle through with schools, um, it's just now common practice. So uh, it's not to evaluate teachers at all, it's basically just to see what's going on in classrooms. Then we deb debrief with the principal and the leadership team about things that we see that were positive, things that we can make improvements on, and how we can support the schools and teachers better. So next um, is the professional practice goal. Um, so in September of 2021, we launched the development of the new dis district strategic improvement plan with all of our stakeholders leading to the completion of a multi-year improvement plan by early April 2022. So we are on path with that. So on April 5th, uh, as you, Larry Likas was with us last week, uh, we have the draft of the strategic plan and then on April 5th, we'll be voting on that strategic plan. Uh, and this process will sp support the identification of initiatives that will serve as a blueprint for improving student outcomes and closing the achievement gap. So this, um, this has been a long time coming. Um, when you're a new superintendent, you're, you're tasked with actually looking at the district and coming up with a new strategic plan, either a three to a five year plan. Um, when we were in the process of doing that, we were delayed because of COVID. Um, and then when, once we got the district review and it didn't look you know, good at all, uh, as we have the MOU and the partnership with DESE, part of that partnership was DESE um, assigning Laurie Likas, the consultant for um, Coaching for Success, uh, has been the person that worked with us on building the strategic plan 
And we did pick the model, the planning for success model that involves all the stakeholders. So basically we had a community planning team which, um, which involved parents, students, teachers, uh, community partners. Um, then we had the, the leadership team, which was all the district leaders. Um, so those two teams worked together to um, go over SWOT analyses, and we also did um, um, root cause analysis. So we looked at seven different areas. Uh, we looked at English, math, special education, bilingual, um, and we did AP, our AP, IB um, opportunities and honors programs for kids. So we looked at every uh, aspect and teams, seven different leadership teams worked on doing the SWOT and the um, root cause analysis and came up with a ton of information that ended up um, you know, going in and breaking down the strategic plan that you saw last week. So, so um, you know, we've made progress on that, which has been, you know, it's, it's been a lot through COVID. Um, but we now have the draft of, of a strategic plan that really should move us forward. And again, it's a five-year plan, a blueprint to improve the district. And then we have district goal one. So flip back. district goal one was to build an equitable, diverse, and inclusive professional culture in which all stakeholders invest in the academic success and social emotional wellness of all students through culturally responsive um, practices. So um, first, last year, we hired um, a lot of staff, over 250 staff members uh, throughout the whole district. 43% of those people hired were people of color, which was blew away any statistic that we've ever seen before. Um, so 43% of all hires last year of, were people of color, 33% of those people were certified staff, um, people that needed a certification in either to be a teacher, a guidance counselor, administrator, or an adjustment counselor, 33%. Most times, most districts only average between maybe five to 7%. Last year, again, we were at 33, which was a goal of ours. Um, it was a part of the Build Your Own, uh, Grow Your Own program, which we continue to support. Um, we also the created last year the new uh, Office of Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion, um, which really helped the district move forward. Uh, so Renee and her team uh, have worked hard to provide the PD that we had our first ever full day PD um, on election day last November, and it was all towards equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, Renee and her team put together a great booklet, uh, and now they continue to do that work in the schools. Um, also, about um, investing in students and making sure we're inclusive. We, you heard about the bilingual, the new launch program that we're doing with the bilingual department with our bi bilingual students so we can keep them in their neighborhood schools and make sure that they have more opportunities to move out of the bilingual program into, um, into more inclusive programs that, have, that give them the opportunity to take higher level classes. Um, and you heard that last week from Kelly Jones. And we also, as you just heard recently, is about the middle school's honors program, bringing the honors program back to every middle school uh, based on the Junior National Honor Society, another presentation you saw last week. So again, just another way that we're opening up opportunities for all students, uh, especially our students of color, our students with disabilities, and our English language learners. District Go 2. This was a big one as well. <laughs> um, implement the new BPS transportation department uh, designed to serve students in a safe and efficient manner. Continue to build the transportation department with the goal of increasing transportation offerings to our students while at the same time decreasing the non-net school spending budget. Um, I'm proud to say that I can stand here today and let you know how successful this has been. Uh, we were off to a rocky start, no question about it, uh, in the fall, um, probably for about three weeks to a month. It was rocky, um, but things were smoothed out. Staff was put in place. Um, drivers were hired. Um, we do not have a driver shortage like a lot of uh, private companies. 
Um, but I want to commend this committee because you had the courage to put this forward and really push this. Um, this was talked about for a very long time. And if it wasn't for the courage of this committee um, to really push us to private, uh, bring this in house, um, we would be spending millions more in a, in a transportation. Like next year, we will not have a contract with for a student because we are now in the process of waiting for the 65 new large buses to come in, which we should be in in early July. We're in the process of hiring those those drivers to make sure they're trained and ready to go. Uh, we're in the process of, of building a new um, transportation software that will allow parents to see exactly where their, their child's van or bus is starting in September on an app, uh, which will be very important for safety for not only the parents but for the school staff as well and for the students. So, I mean, this has been, you know, people, when you stop and think about this achievement, and again, this is just not about me. This is about what you did and then the staff in the, in the school system and the drivers and the people that do this every day, the mechanics um, from the transportation director, Cliff, now that he's been involved. Um, this is a huge operation. People forget that it's a, we opened an entire transportation department. Mr. Sullivan can tell you what that's like. I mean, this is something that, and we're, again, we're not in the business of transportation, so to be able to do this at a school system our size is, is just incredible. So again, I commend you. Um, and you know, now that we'll put more buses on next year, we'll have our whole bus and transportation department running and you know, we'll be able to do a lot more for kids. Um, we'll look at decreasing the, um, the walk zones to see if we can cover more and give more kids more opportunities. Um, but this again, I can't speak about enough. This, is, this has been something that was a major, <laughs> I mean, we're still always, you know, we always have to be obvious about student achievement. That's number one. But being able to put this in place is really going to decrease over, save millions of dollars to the city, which then could go towards, again, the student's education into closing the achievement gap. So again, kudos to, to you and the mayor uh, and Troy and the city council also for approving this and really getting this, getting this going. Uh, District O3, to ensure the additional funding from the Student Opportunity Act and the element the Act Elementary and Secondary School Emergency Relief ESSER stimulus program supports the Student Opportunity Act plan in the new district improvement plan. So with all the money that we have coming in through ESSER 3, as you know, Student Opportunity Act money is, is lower than uh, we hoped because of student enrollment, but we still have the 34 million in ESSER funding. Um, we are up 9.8 million in Chapter 70 funding, and it's up to us as a district goal to make sure this money is used to improve student achievement and it has to be tied to not only data but a strategic and, and, and district improvement plan. So um, we got good news today that the ESSER, the ESSER plan that you, uh, our budget that you voted on last week was approved by the state and the federal government. Uh, there's a lot of strings attached. There was a lot of paperwork. Chris, Chris will talk about it at the, later at the budget meeting. but. Um, Again, I kudos to you for how much time you spent uh, combing through the, the budget and really um, you know, putting things in place and that is, is really gonna help us close the achievement gap. So, and that's it, I can take any questions. I'll sit back down. Thank you. Do any of the members have any questions or comments? Mrs. Ehlers? Just really quick, um, you said we have $34 million left in ESSER funds. Is ESSER funds the same as the Student Opportunity Act, or are those two separate funding sources? Two separate okay, funding Okay, so sources. what do we have left in the Student Opportunity Act? Well, we ended up, um, last year we got 21 million. Yeah. This year we have just 9.8 million, because mm -hmm. uh, we were down 754 students in enrollment. So um, when Chris presented last week, so the Student yeah. Opportunity Act is now basically it's, part, it's basically now your budget. It's part of the, um, the Chapter 70 funding. So you don't really see it separately anymore. Okay. Um, it's part of what you get from Chapter 70, which goes through the city to us. Um, and it was obviously Student Opportunity Act is the reform of the old ed reform yep. bill that just wasn't keeping up. And um, 
again, last year we got about 21 million. This year we got about 12, but then you have to subtract out all the charter school costs, and we got about 9.8. That's what we were talking about at the finance committee right. meeting. Okay, gotcha. I'm with you now. Yep. Thank you. No, no Perfect. problem. Anyone else have any questions? Mrs. Sullivan? I just have a comment. Um, the superintendent's evaluation is one of the most important things that you will do as a school committee member. It's not an option. It is a requirement that each school committee member completes this evaluation. We owe it to Mike to do that. He works hard. And th thank you. Thank you. And actually, I just, um, sorry, Mrs. Sullivan. Um, Mr. Sullivan, I'll make a comment afterwards. Just a comment. Uh, actually, two comments. Uh, number one, since Mike Thomas has been superintendent, I think you have moved Brockton Public Schools greatly improved. And I just wanted to mention that uh, you only have half the buses now. But with the half, you have more buses than Bat Bus has. Yeah. <laughs> and they've been doing it for 50 years. <laughs> yep. So. Kudos to you, kudos to the mayor. We've, we've really come a long way. Yep, and, absolutely. And we could all, almost sit back and say, what the heck is COVID-19? I never heard of it. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> almost, almost, almost. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Sullivan. I just wanted to make a quick comment. So, um, you know, the superintendent had gone over quite a few items and I, I again, um, Thank you for, we were at the mass conference, we had always talked about it, and I know I always bring this up because a lot of people watching, sometimes it's the first time they're hearing this, but for our district to have our own busing is huge. That's a huge part of our budget. And, and we were leasing them at that price point, and we're owning them at this price point. So if the superintendent, you know, we're at the mass conference 2019, right before COVID hit. Right, right before. Uh, Mr. Diagostino was superintendent and I, if you didn't push, and we had that had them come out and do did they they came out and did an assessment right um i believe they happen to have like a cancellation or something they were able to finally you know get brockton on Two the weeks calendar before covid hit no sooner did they finish the assessment covid hit and everything shut down so we were very very fortunate right. um again brockton is always a leader and I, i'm sure other districts are going to see the model that we are working on it, as far as having our own busing because a lot of districts were there and it's, it's a huge step to bring on your own busing. And there's always a little, you know, a few hiccups here and there. But I think, you know, knock on wood, we're getting there. And to have our own transportation is huge. And it, it's definitely going to help our, our, our district. So, uh, and thank you, Superintendent, for the um, presentation. So on April 5th, we are going to be voting on the actual strategic plan. So they will have that finalized by the April 5th yep, meeting. So, um, so, so I'll get you in Friday's packet. Um, the updated, they did some tweaking of some of the language to make it more user friendly for parents. Um, and a lot of, um, took, you know, just changed some things around the edge of speak just to make it make sure that it makes sense to people. Jess has done a really good job working with Laurie Likas on, you know, not changing any of the content because it was very inclusive, as you heard, the, the, the parent, the teacher. Um, we also had the students speak uh, during that. So we didn't want to really change what we got from people because it was a very uh, inclusive process, but we wanted to make the language a little bit more so people understood exactly what we were doing uh, and how we're going to do it. So, um, you know, so that will come, and that will be in Friday's packet, which will still be in the draft form because you obviously have to vote on it on the, on the 5th. The 5th? April 5th, I Definitely. believe, yep. is Tuesday the next the meeting. Um, but it's, again, it's important to note that, um, you know, we... We now need to, you know, need to show results. Um, you know, we, we, as you go back to the district review and we, we spend a lot of time with the state, um, we have to see our results. We have to see our kids, the student performance has to go up. I mean, we, teachers are working hard. We've made a lot of changes, putting a lot of things in place. We're going to be with SR3 buying a lot, $8 million in curriculum. Um, but it's the student achievement we really need to see start to, you know, the state will give us time, but, you know, we need to see increases every year um, at a steady rate to make sure that we're really, um, that I'm doing the job that has to be done because at the end of the day, the most important thing is the student achievement. Um, and all these things that we're putting in place 
need to be geared towards student achievement uh, and supporting our teachers and staff in the schools to make sure our students do a lot better and, and close the achievement gap. So, um, you know, that's, that's the thing we always have to keep our eye on. I mean, we are giving them the tools that they need now. Um, you know, with all the cuts that we had, it was difficult. Keep teachers in our classrooms or cut programs. We had to keep our teachers in the classrooms. With the funds now, we are able to help our, our teachers and our staff with the programs, with the curriculum, um, get things updated. And so we are giving them the tools that are going to help them, help our students. So, um, you know, moving forward, it's all positive. Again, I, I mentioned student achievement because you, I don't know if you saw um, uh, Boston is now going through um, another district review that's been ordered by the Department of Ed. Uh, their district review was, I think, the year before ours. Um, and usually it's every six years for a district review, but uh, obviously the department is, um, feels that Boston has to have another one quickly. And, you know, that's something that if they don't see improvement here, that could happen here. So that's why we want to make sure that we continue to put things in place to make sure that we can be successful for our kids. We, you know, achievement has to, has to start to improve, and um, we have to start to see that increase. Thank you. Uh, Mayor? Thank you. I, I just want to thank Mike uh, for his leadership and for his professionalism. Uh, he and I talk three or four times a day. Um, I can tell you that that never happened with previous mayors and superintendents. It just didn't. That's a fact. Um, the fact that um, he and I, one of my first meetings was with Aldo and Troy about the buses, and we did a cost containment um, endeavor, and it was supported fully by this committee, which is excellent. And he called me when um, he contemplated bringing Dr. Zach back. And he's like, what do you think? I said, yes. So, um, you know, he has a wonderful team. It's just not him. It's not just you. It's not just me. It's us as a team. Um, I do think it's brilliant that we locked him in for a couple additional years. It's important to keep the train moving down the proverbial track. Um, but I just want to say thanks, Mike, for what you're doing. Um, the relationship between you and the BEA and President Gibson is uh, unparalleled. Uh, as someone that served 14 years as city council, I witnessed it on the outside, and I know Tim and Judy, you were here um, seeing it. Um, so we need to just continue to know that we have an advocate for the students without question, but also the staff, right? And that was highlighted and illustrated by all of us, I think, during COVID. Um, you know, Mike and I needed to actually take some actions that were ahead of the head of the game. I mean, we closed the schools before the, the governor did out of abundance of caution and safety for the kids and for, of course, for the teachers and staff. So, um, you know, I won't be here the fifth. I'm flying down to D.C. to meet with the senators and congressmen, but I, I'm here in spirit because I support it wholeheartedly. And I just want to thank you, Mike, for what you do every day to better BPS. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Any other members have any comments or questions? Mr. Homer? Sorry, I just had just a quick question. Um, I don't know if it's if it's available, but it has has Brockton seen any change in um, in person enrollment? I know in some districts we have kids still coming in and registering, transferring from one program to another. I wasn't sure if there's any. We're change. probably back up about 150 students, um, which is good. We're going in in the right direction. Um, I'll have um, coming up. Um, probably in May, I'll have uh, Masia Andrade Serpa come and, and do a presentation on, and she'll update you because we'll be in the thick of the kindergarten uh, enrollment and then, you know, the enrollment that really starts to pick up in the spring and in the summer. So I'll have her do a presentation on that. Uh, and also, um, Jess Hodges, um, we are going to be working, um, we are going to be putting out a bid for a PR firm to come in and really start to beef up our advertising. I mean, just as one person, it's been very difficult for her to keep up with everything, but we're going to put out a bid for a PR firm to really start to come in and market um, our schools, our athletic programs, our um, extracurricular programs, the programs here in the fine arts. I think it's important for us to put some videos out. Um, I remember back in, in Dr. Zachowitz and I were talking about it today, back in 2003, uh, it's probably further, probably 2002, we were going through accreditation here at the high school. I was at the department head, and a video was done, and Mike Dowling, who used to be a sports reporter on Channel 5 with um, Mike Lynch, he actually was the narrator, 
and I'm actually trying to find it so we can play it, so just so I can show you what we want to do because, and Tony's mentioned this before, you go onto some websites for Severian, uh, BC High, or Spelman, and you just see, you know, a lot of, you know, videos and and things that we can re, 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 we have to really put into high gear um, to really tout the good things that are going on here. Um, and so we are putting out a bid for a, a PR for them. I'm not talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars, just, you know, something that we come in and, and start to market ourselves better of all the programs we have, um, extracurricular along with all the in-school programs we have. So we're going to do that so we can start really putting some good stuff out this spring um, and really start to show more of the good things that are, that are happening. So... Um, I, Jared, I think that would help with our enrollment as well. I agree. I mean, I, as as a as a middle school counselor too. I mean, we have um, you know vocational technical right. schools that come to our public high school to showcase that for the eighth graders, and they have video presentations and things to highlight right. all that. And now that we have things open, and the drama club just did their competition piece, and the auditorium was open, and we had schools and visitors, it's we have a lot of things we could showcase. Thank you. That's right, very and I, and it's important to know that we're getting now that we're really diving deep into this early college initiative i think it's really important for us to market that to our, our middle schoolers eighth graders especially that you know coming up to brockton high or edison or the key center or the huntington you know you're going to have the opportunity to graduate with up to 60 credits um again it's gradually going to be put in but um you know up you know for 60 credits or ha towards an associate's degree or associate's degree or 60 credits towards a, a bachelor's that's huge, and we have to make sure we market that because, um, you know, the goal is for us at some point to have close to. Our goal would be if the if the state is looking to have up to two hundred thousand. Right now, they're at forty five thousand enrolled. If they're looking for two hundred thousand. Then our goal would be that we have at least two thousand of our high school students enrolled in early college programs when it's fully up and running. So, uh, and again, we have to market that. Definitely. Thank you. I know Jess Hodges had some um, pamphlets made. Um, she worked on that with the superintendent. So if, if you want to pass them out, if you know businesses, if you know um, places that you can put them, I know she gave me a stack and I'm sure there's, there's some just, you know, hand them out. Um, but we are working and I think that's wonderful. We, we have to market to the middle schoolers. Um, any other members with any questions, comments? Mrs. Ehlers and then Mrs. Mendez. Sorry. It's okay. Um, one thing I was going to say, Mike, that I just I want to point out, and because this is pretty huge, the thirty three percent certified, like I I'm not sure, like that is amazing. It is so hard to find credentialed people. So for us to be able to have forty three percent of the over two hundred and fifty that were hired. Number one, to be people of color, but to have 33%, I mean, I can tell you right now, I know several individuals that are kicking themselves, scraping, trying to get their people credentialed because the, we had the waiver over COVID and now it's all coming, you know, it's all coming together that they want to see credentialed individuals in the classroom. So I just, I mean, that's huge, absolutely huge. I was expecting a really low number there because of, because of how quickly we hired. Right. Um, so congratulations on that. Nice job there. And it's important that we, um, some are still on emergency licenses and for yeah. another year, so it's very important. We're putting things in place now, academies, mm -hmm. um, for uh, developing educators, we call them, to make sure that they get what they need, the skills, because a lot of them got emergency license and didn't, you know, they had, because they had bachelor's degrees, but did not have formal training as an educator. So yeah. it's, now we have to do that because, you know, if we don't do a good job of helping them and supporting them through PD uh, and helping them get through the MTELs yep. um, so they can get their initial and then permanent certification, it's important for us to give them the support that they need. Otherwise, we're going to lose a lot of those people, and we don't want to do that. So it's hiring is important, but we obviously, but we have to make sure we put the supports in place to make sure we keep them. Absolutely, and I mean, I think that's just one of the first steps in investing in our right. people, and that's a big part of the plan. Um, the only other thing that I was going to say is, um, oh, if you need any help with the PR firm, just let me know. Okay, I've, good. Yeah, I'll have Jess reach out to you. I hired a million marketing right, vendors in my career, so if you need any help whatsoever, let me know. Yeah, so when they bids come in, we'll 
yeah. we get to review their package and, yeah. and see what you know that what they great. offer and you know their backgrounds and the one thing that I'm that I'm finding even in my own personal career is that this generation's um, we keep saying community. We're trying to get them back in person. We're trying to create community. But they've sort of already created their own virtual community, and we're the ones that are catching up. And so, But they still want to see those pictures. They still are drawn to faces. They still, No matter what, they still are going to the website, and they want to see real people experiencing real things, even if they have no plans on applying for any kind of athletic sport or right. whatever. They just want to know that that's available. And so I think that, you know, I just, I think that's huge. Um, and I think that that's going to go a long way in terms of, you know, selling the features of all the programs that we put into play. Like we're, we're going to be, you know, with any luck, we're going to become the wanted commodity in the area because of what we do offer right back where, you know, get, getting right up back there where we wanted to be, where right. we were before. Exactly. So I think we're headed in the right direction. I'm looking forward to April 5th, and um, thank you for your presentation. Thank you. And thank again, you. I was saying to Jess today, even if a, you know, even if a, a PR firm costs us 100000 if it, if it brings us 100 students, it's $1.6 million in funding. So it pays for itself over and over again. Thank you. Mrs. Uh, Mendez? Is there any way that we can get more insight on the transportation software app you mentioned? Sure, like yep. They're in, the, they're in the middle of uh, um, demoing two. Okay. So I'll have Dr. Murray get you information. We'll put it in the Friday's packet. All right, yep. sounds great. And then um, you talked about district walkthroughs. I know I don't have the district review language exactly, but I know evaluation system across the district was a huge Problem. major improvement that we had to do. So when you talk about district walkthroughs, how do evaluations look like and feedback for individual teachers? So the walkthroughs are separate. They can't be evaluated yep. because it's not tied to, obviously, the contract. So the walkthroughs are basically quick visits, to make sure that you know object objectives are on the board, students are engaged, just to see that the things we're putting in place district wide is getting down to the classrooms, um, and that the walkthroughs have gone great. But then the actual job of the evaluations of of not only the evaluations of teachers, but the evaluations of principals. Uh, assistant principals, associates, all our department heads, um, and again, the district review hit us hard that we weren't doing a good job at that at all, and sometimes we weren't evaluating people at all. Um, so we've put systems in place through Karen Spaulding, who we hired into that position, who has spent a time, we've done workshops, we've done three workshops with our school leaders, uh, principals, department heads, directors, assistants, associates, on evaluation. Um, we're monitoring it closely to make sure that um, every teacher is evaluated through the timeline. Uh, but it's not about just the timelines. First, we had to make sure we had the timelines. People were following when you had to evaluate people, as you know, that was important. But the kind of evaluations, you're not just evaluating doesn't mean it's going to help somebody improve their practice. It's how we're evaluating, what kind of feedback are we giving, what are we looking for. Um, so we had to do a lot of work with our administrators as well to you know, get in that process of what a real good evaluation looks like because, you know, if you're not giving teachers good feedback, you know, you can't help them improve their practice, and um, we hadn't been doing a good job of that. So a lot of the training that had to take place was with our own administrators to make sure that their evaluations were meaningful, um, and it actually helped a teacher improve their practice because, as you know, if you don't get quality feedback, you know, you're not going to approve if you're just telling people all the time they're either doing poorly or doing well with no real concrete feedback. It doesn't improve their practice. So we've spent a lot of time on that. Okay. Um, thank you. And I'll I can actually send, um, I can send you the PowerPoint presentations we did with our principals. Melinda, um, I have that that we did. Um, actually sent it to the state so we can send that one that, um, myself, Karen, and Sue did a few, probably three months ago at the principal's meeting. I, ha I, I think I have that in my files. I can send that Friday's back at two. Thank you. Any other members with any questions or comments? Oh, I just had oh, one sure. more. 
Um, so then the district go to, I know, no, sorry, not that one. The one about the blueprint of, the, okay, the professional practice goal, right? So this one's just focusing on the development and the blueprint, which that's what we saw, right? But I guess my question is how are we going, because I think like it's an A plus paper, but how is this effectively going to play out? So that will be next year's goals. So when I okay. present to you the goals for next year, it's the action plan and the action steps that have to follow. So you can have the blueprint, which again was the goal was to finally get that in place and develop it this year, get it voted on in April. So now this spring and going into the summer, uh, so when I present to you next year's goals, um, you'll see a lot about the action plans that go into um, my goals that actually will put this district strategic plan, come, that's where it makes it come to life. That's actually the real, the, the, where the real work happens mm -hmm. is the action plan. So what are you doing? What are we doing in our schools? What are we doing for professional development? Um, you know, how are we supporting people? all that? Like what are our meetings like? What are our professional learning communities? How are they taking place? Um, common planning time, do our schedules reflect, um, you know, our student schedules reflect um, a way, for, you know, that, at the positive and, and moving us in the right direction. So all that action plans is, is what's gonna bring the strategic plan to life. So that's the important work, okay. you're right. That, so that will be next year's goals. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, any, um, anyone else with any questions or comments? I'll just make one, one um, just comment. So as Mrs. Sullivan had stated, it is one of our duties as a school committee member to um, work on the evaluation for the superintendent. So we will be working on that um, soon. As I've been working with Karen Spaulding, um, we're going to start uh, getting everything together. Um, we have a lot of new members. So she'll walk through the process with you. If we have any questions, um, she will walk us through it. She'll help the members. Um, they'll have the evidence available, things like that. Um, we're going to try to do something a little different than we did last year. Um, as we learn, year after year, we, we tweak things a little. So we always take feedback from the committee members. So um, we're, we're going to, she's looking into a different program as far as um, the online, um, doing the actual evaluation. So uh, last year, it was due in May. So we are, you know, it's coming up. We do need to get this done soon. Uh, so we will be working on this um, so we can have it ready by July, by, by, our, by our expected deadline. So if um, anyone else with anything, just, Superintendent? Just to add, so what Karen will also put together um, is a, um, a team's location just for school committee. It will be a secure location where I'll, I'll upload all the evidence for each goal. So you'd be able to go in and, and look at the evidence. So I'll, you know, upload the workshops we've done with evaluation, uh, all the information about transportation, all the information about um, the walkthrough tool, the lesson plan templates, um, you know, all that will get uploaded and, you know, just a ton of evidence that we'll put in there for each goal. Um, and she'll set that up in a secure location under Teams That's so what we you did can last all year. access that. Yeah. It, it was very easy to access. And for those that have any questions, again, um, Karen's there to help out, and I'm sure there's others on the team that can help um, with the process. So um, we are going to start that very soon. Um, and if any members have any questions, you can always reach out to me or reach out to Karen. Um, but I believe that's it for um, the superintendent's contract subcommittee. Um, under item number two, do we have anything under other business? I don't see anything. Can I get um Motion to adjourn. Okay, so Mr. Rodriguez, um, motion to adjourn. Has it been seconded? Seconded by...